going on, guys? What is happening? I think you can hear me, man. I think my mic is set correctly. Don't think there should be an issue with my audio. As far as I know, there shouldn't be an issue with my audio. I don't see my bar changing, but I, I don't think there's an issue. Everything looks like it's plugged in properly. Everything's registered. So if you can't hear me, let me know. I will shut the stream down and restart it. Um, man, this was a hard one for me. Somebody wanted me to talk about this the other day. If you guys can hear my audio, please say something in the comment section. First of all, hi, happy Sunday. Um, I just need confirmation that my audio is coming through. If not, I'll restart the stream, restart my computer. I don't know. I haven't done this in a while. So, um, also please smash the like button. Hey, Jody, what's going on, man? Awesome. 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 Glad you guys can hear me. Um, you know, I, I sat and, and I talked with Clinton, buddy of mine, uh, tech tweaker, um, the other night when we were flying FPV. We were talking kind of old school Hubson and the days of Dan when Hubson was, you know, doing lots of mods and, and, and taking, you know, the H501S to new heights and standards and just having fun. And then after I realized that the company was being really shady and doing extremely shady things to the people that were purchasing their products, I was pretty upset with them. I made some videos that, that I don't regret. Um, I think they needed to hear as a company, especially Kevin, the CEO, of, of Hubson, um, I, I, or I'm sorry, Sam, the CEO of Hubson. Um, he did see my videos. He was not happy, but I, I think at the same time, there were a lot of people that purchased their products that were unhappy. Michael Green, I actually am going to send you an email today, my friend. I saw your message. I wrote it down. Um, so I have your email address. I'm going to actually get to you about the solo. So cheers. Thank you for the $4 super chat, my friend. Um, I will get to you about that. So uh, I just want you to know, I am, I am paying attention. I do check all my emails and go through all that stuff. Uh, but moving, moving forward, do I forgive Hubson as a company? They did some really shady things to people. Um, the tumble of death experience was not cool. Pond, GFO, D-Man, what's going on? Ruland, Ryan, Craig. Oh my gosh, we're getting a whole bunch of people in here. Um, I just want to say that, that I, my frustrations with Hubson after four years have come down. And, and the fact of the matter is they are making affordable products. Is the Hubson Zeno the best product I've ever flown? Absolutely not. For the price point, it is fantastic for what it is. It's 4K. I wish it had optical flow, but that's why they made upgraded versions of this. However, this thing is like three or two years old now, and it's still functioning very well. It crab walks to the left and right, but it does take fantastic footage. I wish the battery time was a little better, but Hubson has jumped leaps and bounds since they first started. And I don't see that they're creating problems for the users quite like they used to when they bought their products, man. They were just so unwilling to help. It was extremely hard to help people. Um, you know, the company just didn't have the resources to be able to help people that bought their products at the time when we first started buying products, which is where I stepped in. I was like, man, I can see they really need help. So I started making videos and doing all that. I was disappointed that the company chose not to, to work with me and solve the major problems. TOD, tumble of death issue that was a 45 degree bank turn in altitude hold would cause the drone to fall out of the sky. And they were blaming it on um, pilot air, which later on after I tested with their beta software that they sent me to be able to play with the firmware and stuff, I was able to see that they wrote it in as a fail safe. And I thought that was extremely shady that they did that. I told the company, I reached out to Shally to you and I said, Hey, you need to solve this problem. You can't keep telling these people to pilot air. It is quite obvious in, in, in the software that you sent me to look at this stuff that, that the RTH or the fail safe was engaged by your company. And you're telling these pilots that it's their fault. And me and Shally had it out. We had a big bang out. Finally, Sam and Kevin, the CEO, you know, was like, if you can't talk good about us, then, then stop making videos. And I was like, well, I'm not going to stop making videos. So I made a couple more. And then the Hubson Hitler video came out, which a lot of people watched. Mike B, it's good to see you. Um, Alfred Bloodworth, what's going on, man? So that was four years ago. Do I forgive the company for what they did? The answer is no. I don't forgive the company for what they did. They should have solved that problem for the people that were purchasing their products, especially after I found out that it was their fault and they intentionally did it. That is their fault. That's something I can never forgive them for. Okay, but moving forward, I don't have to hate them as a company. Their products are getting better with time. They're a small company that has been trying to grow. And, and honestly, with the way the drone market's going, 
I'm, I'm thankful at this point for little companies like Hubsit. I may not forgive them, but I'm thankful that they're still here. They're still making affordable products for everybody. Even if the support isn't still really there, there's a large community of people that, that are willing to help get hubs in to another level and, and help with the support community. I don't always agree with everyone that, that flies hubs and products and the stuff that they do, and I'm sure they don't agree with me, but at the same time, there's a place for everybody in this community. So I've been trying to be more lenient with everyone, man. Um, it's not really me. It's not the type of person I am, but... I can tell you right now, I see that everybody's like, oh, you got to show leniency. So I've been trying to. As far as Hubson, no, I do not forgive them for what they originally did. I still will hold that against them because they've never come forth and said anything. They've never been honest with everybody about what happened. And it's very frustrating to me. So sorry, guys. I know you're chatting it up in the comments section here. Um, let me answer some of these. So that's the official answer is no, I don't forgive them. Do I think they're a company that's still doing really good and is, is taking things to a new height that's affordable and cheap? The answer to that is yes, I do. Don't forget to smash the like button, guys, if you're up for it. Um, <laughs> you know they are never wrong. <laughs> this is true. Um, let's see. Namiko Honda. Hey, guy. What's going on, man? Um, let me go back and go through a few of these guys. Totally understand, Ryan. I kind of step back a little bit due to work and some kind of stuff. Yep, yep, yep. My Zeno is still living hermit's life in the woods somewhere. See, man, I'm sorry about that, bro. I really am. I remember that, Ryan. Let's see what we got here. Don't chat really. Hey, guys. Okay. So, I, I the other thing that I'm a little frustrated about with Hubson right now is that, you know, this battery really, ah, look at this. These clips they are garbage that they put on these things. <laughs> yeah. They take some work to get out of there, man. The spring-loaded mechanisms inside get stuck real easy, and then they're hard to get out. That and the battery is swelling. And I take care of this battery. It doesn't slide in as easily as it used to. It's taking a bit more of a shove to get it in there. So um, I'm glad they made some improvement models. Remember, this this unit is like two, maybe even almost three years old at this point. No, I think it's like two years old, year and a half, somewhere around there. But they have the Hubson Pro. Now they have the Xeno 2. And, and I think those are all very affordable drones. The 4K camera is not bad if, and this is what we're going to talk about here pretty soon. I ordered the filters for the original Xeno. And I got to tell you, they are the goofiest filters I've ever seen try to be put on. They give you a suction stick to put on it, to insert it into the lens. And every time you want to do something, you have to have this with you to remove it. That's a frustration. I don't, this is some of the things that Hubson does. This doesn't make sense. I don't know. And I still, they still to this day, a lot of things do don't make sense to me, but it is what it is. I'll try and we'll see if they work. I, I, I don't know, man. I just want to have filters because I'm tired of all my footage being blown out. So I want to be able to adjust my ISO and shutter speed for actual filters so that we don't get blurring and cloud dispersing and all that other craziness, man. The, the Xeno camera is good, but when it's really bright out, man, it will just blow the image out. So you kind of have to have uh, the filters for it. So, all right, who do we got in here? Um, drone alone. What's up, dude? PD Tech just popped in here. GFO. It's good to see you guys. Uh, no forgiveness for the wicked. Well, like I said, I... I I, f I don't forgive them for what they originally did to people. Do I think they're a company that's still worthwhile buying their products now? Yes, absolutely. I think, I think Hubson has finally reached a point where I can say that I would suggest buying their products again. Um, the company's on a path that is finally kind of turned around a bit, I think, and, and they're trying to actually be honest with everybody and, and moving forward. I think they really want to get their drone sales up. So I do. I, think, I, think, I don't agree with everything Hubson does. That's it for sure. Um, but like I said, I think, I think they are moving in a positive direction. So plummet, it's good to see you guys. Heck yeah, man. Don't forget to smash that like button if you're up for it. If not, there's also a dislike button right next to it. Feel free to push that puppy too. Everybody's allowed to have their opinion. Let's see. I'm, I'm looking good. I'm looking good. Yeah, man. I'm still trying to get below that 260 mark. I'm, I'm, I'm right now, man, I'm, I'm hanging. It's hard. It's, I don't know why. My body's just trying to retain all this water content. It's really frustrating. 
Um, you know, I'll get down to like 272 and then my body after like a couple of days will retain a bunch of water content that I have to now disperse with water pills. And then all of a sudden I'll jump back up to like 278 and then back down to 272. I want to get below that 260 mark and keep going from there. But sometimes you just hit a stall point. It takes a while to get off that stall point. So we're working on it, man. I think I still look good, right? I, th I think so. I think we're still doing it. Yeah. I, I look a little rough. I mean, I burned my face numerous times and this camera shows all my blemishes. I'm a beautiful guy in real life. You see all that? No filter needed. Hey. Ah, <clears throat> uh, hi. Don't forgive him. I'm the right cheating. Right on. <laughs> Sweet and crazy. Good luck with that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Direction, positive, direct. Hopefully we'll bring competition to DJI. I don't think Hubson will ever be direct competition for DJI. And I think that's why DJI doesn't really care about what Hubson's doing. Hubson doesn't want to end up on DJI's radar. I can tell you that. If they do, they will just be annihilated instantly. So stick to stick to cheap drones, Hubson, and I think you'll be okay in the drone market. You start to compete with DJI, that's when you start getting bullied and pushed around. So Take a chill pill. You can copy some of their technology, which I see that you try to do often, but don't go overboard because they'll, they'll put you in your place if they want to. Um, I remember you sending me the correct firmware for that Hubson 501S. Uh, well, I didn't, it wasn't the correct firmware. What I was doing was something Hubson, I guess, just wasn't doing. I, I built the Superflyer firmware package and Hubson, any idea that I came up with, I had to give to Hubson because that was an agreement that we made for me testing their software and their programs. So just to put that out there, it was me. If you installed Superflyer firmware package to your platform, that was a, a package that I created. So it, it just decimated, it eliminated everything. All the range issues it was having, the funky crab walk like the, the Xeno still does. I, I went through their firmware and tore it down and then re redid everything and then built the Superflyer firmware package. And when I released that, man, people were going miles away with these toys. It was insane. Just insanity at the time. At the time, that was almost five years ago. So, but yeah, man, um, I did. I spent a lot of time on the phone helping people. I was basically like Hubson's tech support. It was really weird. They just didn't have the ability to be tech support. So, dude, it was, man. And we also got rid of TOD. All right, Michael Green says, who makes the best drone in your opinion? Well... I'm a biased guy. I happen to be a major fan of the 3DR Solo. Not as much now because there's so much going on with it. It's still a DIY platform, but it, 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 the idea of the Solo is that it never becomes obsolete. It's APM-driven RG Copter setup, so you can keep putting technology in it that will make it better over time. It's like a fine wine. Um, if something becomes obsolete, they just build a new part, put it in there, and it's relevant again, which is what makes it such an interesting platform. Um, it's done things that I've never seen other GPS drones do and still continues to baffle me. The only downside to that is 3DR is not involved with the project anymore. And you have to go through Pro PCNC, which would be Philip Rose, who weirdly enough just reached out to me the other day. Uh, Philip, for those of you guys who don't know, Philip Rose was the lead engineer on the design of the 3DR solo. And then you got Matt Lawrence and a few of these other guys, Ian. Um, anyways, uh, long story short. Basically, Philip reached out to me the other day, and we had a good communication, um, which is strange because I wasn't really on on a communicating level with these guys before. Like, I got them all on a live stream one time we talked, but I, I was kind of mad at them and upset for things that was happening. And I've learned to forgive those guys over time. I see why they did certain things now, but some of it I still question. But um, Philip, as a character, uh, is a good guy, man. And um, he's, he's a solid individual, but he's bringing 3D art in new heights. So I love tech that you don't have to purchase a new drone every six months to a year and go, oh, now it's got this feature. I need that feature. With 3DR, you just design that, that, that object that you want, write the code into the software for Arducopter, and then apply it. And then everyone else can download it, buy that part, stick it on there, and now you have that tech available to you with that functionality. That's what sets open source apart from what DJI and proprietary drones are doing. So for me, the best drone out there still to this day that I think was ready to fly out of the box was the 3DR Solo. You can pick one up today, but I promise you, you have a lot of background research to do.
So Shally looked nice though. Shally was an interesting lady. Yes, yeah, Shally Liu. She was she was interesting. Dealing with her and Hubson was a very strange interaction. Shally was not honest with me. I'm glad she moved on to other things and got away from that company, man. So uh FPV or Sin. What is what is Sin? What are we Sin whoop? I don't know what you're going for there. The best drone is the drone you build. Plummet, nail it right on the head. And that's what's fun about 3DR is that you can keep upgrading it. So you don't really build it, but you can build it from there, which is which is exciting. That's always a good time. So don't forget to smash the like button, guys, if you would, if you're feeling it. Agent A, dude, we need Agent K. Agent A, we're getting some good ones in here. It's a love-hate relationship with Hubson 501S. Uh, was my first drone, which I still fly. Um, and then I bought the Zeno standard. It was good at first until the battery pop. And that's, like I said, I'm on the Zeno standard. And right now the battery's starting to blow. So it's got me a little skittish. So yes, I love mine when it works. Oh man, what, what, what's wrong? Dude, later beans. Beans is Audi. It's good to see you, buddy. Um, but bum bum. Like I said, man, even if there's 23 people in here, like we just had almost 30, and only nine of them push the like button. I really, really don't care. I mean, it's nice that people do it. And I suggest it every once in a while. But even if you don't, it doesn't frustrate me. Like, people think that you get mad when, like, somebody doesn't push the like button. I really don't get mad. I, I don't. I mean, if you support the person that's entertaining you and the entertainment value that they bring and the information that's good, then hit the like button. If I don't do anything but sit behind a computer and look like a fat guy, then by all means, don't ever push it or hit the dislike button. I just have fun. This is fun for me. But your swayed opinions on the like and dislike button have no variation on what Dan's going to do for the rest of the day. I just suggest it. If you're feeling it, push it. If not, it's okay, too. So <laughs> I never let the stupid little buttons affect me. I do like to see them up because it helps the algorithm, but it doesn't change how I'm going to feel about it. I just let you run as I go. <laughs> I love beans, man. So does anybody have any questions, man? I see Mike B. We got to talk on the phone. It's been a while, bro. Um, I tried to join your Facebook thing earlier, but it said it was too fat. Like, that is not true because I cleared your I cleared your your invitation to my to my channel. So also, let's do this because I'm getting people that uh, do 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 do. Uh oh, what happens if I do this? Um, yeah, here we go. I don't know how many of you guys jumped on my new channel. Um, feel free. It's it's a mixture of things. I'm going to go ahead and share this. Um, basically, it's traveling. I, I, wanted, I, I enjoy doing vlogs, and I realize every time I bring those vlogs to this channel, people don't really like them or watch them. So I started that whole other channel, just the life of Dan Squared, based on that vlogs. And I still use my drones in the flight footage, you'll see. Um, but that's going to be an entirely different channel. I'm uploading entirely different content to that channel that's traveling and hanging out and doing stuff like that. Baduga, I see your comment. It popped. Uh, give me one sec. So here's my new channel. If anybody wants to subscribe to this, I'm also going to give you uh, my new Facebook that we have. We have almost 3,000 members now. It's, it's skyrocketing. It's taking off really quick. I think it's at like 23 or 2,400. It's booming. It's shooting up there fast. We invite everyone to share all of their content on there. And trust me, as a community group, we are trying to watch content. We're not just one of those where you like drop a video and like nobody watches it. We are doing our best to make sure that uh, people are getting their stuff watched. We also, I think, picked up a sponsor now for our, our group. Um, Lance, I think, has a buddy that's hopefully going to be sponsoring some stuff, some giveaways and some cool stuff for you guys. So let's see here. I got to go to my group setting. I got to remember how to get there. I don't ever use my uh, this version. I don't ever do this on this version. Drones are us. Here we go. Multi-rotor group. Copy. All right. And... For those of you guys who want it, paste, here is our Facebook group. If you guys want to join, um, it's not just FPV. Even though the questions are mostly FPV, feel free to do whatever you want to do. If you want to post GPS stuff, post GPS stuff. We are trying to help build a community of awesome people. And I see all these, these Facebook groups have tons of members, but nobody's involved and nothing's ever happening. It's like you'll post a video, you'll get two likes, and that's the end of it. We want to group a community of people that are actually willing to watch other people's content, subscribe to their channels, and be a part of a larger thing. You know, YouTube just has done everything to keep people from growing. So if they're going to do that, then we'll take it to Facebook. We'll change the way things work. We don't have to work with YouTube. We can make other decisions. All right, now let me check that comment. Baduga did it cleared. Dropped it. Baduga rules. Where'd that comment go? Oh, I guess somebody cleared it. All right. Never mind. All good. 
Um, hello, Dan the Man. Alan, it's good to see you. Paduga. I post crash. I post crashing. It is good. I'll have to check that out. Agent A, I still fly, just not the Zeno. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Uh, if you don't trust flying, you're a bad pilot. Well, hmm. I mean, there's always room for failure. I can't say that I trust every single bird that goes up. I, I, I have faith in my equipment, but I don't know if I trust it because anything can happen. Batteries fail all the time. Uh, you may go out and fly right now and the KP index might be over three. Let's say, let's say you're flying GPS and your KP index is, is four or better. Let's actually see what the KP index is today. We're going to teach a few lessons here today. Let's see if I can help you guys with some fun stuff. All right. So we're going to pop up UAV forecast for you guys. And we're going to have a look at what my KP index is. There you go. My KP index is at a three. If this was at a four, I would need to know that because my drone would fly away, right? I don't know if you guys know about KP index and all that fun stuff, but if you have never looked up what KP index is and you're flying GPS drones, this is a very good thing to know. Um, so what was I going? Hold on a sec. I think of where I was kind of running off with that, man. My head just took a little turn. I heard something out there and it threw me off. Well, you guys tell me, where was I headed with that? Cool stuff. I was going to do cool. I was going to do cool things. And then I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah. Let me try to find that comment again. That sounds good. And stuff like you know. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't know. I lost where I was going with that. Well, what is KP index? Yeah. So anyways, um, how do I explain this? It's magnetic solar storms, basically. That's what it is. And it messes with GPS. So if there's magnetic solar storms in the atmosphere or above Earth, it can actually really tamper with GPS bad, like horribly bad. So if you're ever flying a drone, make sure that your KP index is three or below. You never want to be above three. <clears throat> a lot of people have not Alan. <laughs> this is, these are good things to know. Um, yeah, GPS functionality, KP index and GPS functionality go hand in hand. There's, you'll, you'll see a video from someone and they'll be like flying around. They're like, I don't understand why my drone just flew away. Sometimes that's the KP index being too high and they don't realize that why it flew away. So they blame the company. And actually that's pilot air for not looking at the KP index before flying. Um, I would say probably 30% of the flyaways that happen are probably due to KP index problems. Now that's gotten better as GPS systems have gotten better, but I think the first two or three years of real droning activity flyaways was caused by KP index. I still wouldn't fly over a four, especially uh, pushing into the five range. That's, that's how you lose your drone really quickly. So why rock strangest thing related to GPS ever heard was trying to fly during a total lunar eclipse kept losing GPS lock on my Xyro Explorer. Well, that was, that was, a, that was a questionable drone from the beginning. That might've just been the drone itself. <laughs> So, yeah, man. Uh, let's see. Characterize magnitude of geometric storms. There you go. It's an excellent indicator of disturbance in the Earth's magnetic field. Boom. Rolling. Drop the, the Google response of it. There you go. <clears throat> so, yes. Isn't crashing part of flying? If you're flying FPV, if you're crashing GPS drones, we need to sit down and have a discussion about what you're doing. You should not be crashing many, many GPS platforms. I, I, I just... Dude, shouldn't. If you're crashing FPV, totally understandable. I say go bang your quad up all day. Let's not be doing that with our GPS platforms, guys. Take it easy. <laughs> is there an app you can get that? Yes, Alan, that app is UAV Forecast on the Android market. Just like it sounds. I'll even type it here. Boom. I don't know why this slash was put in there. KP index is not controlled by anyone here on Earth. The control module has been traced to Alpha. Be <laughs> Mac, you're a goofy guy, man. Don't forget to smash the like button, guys. I love this. See, this is this interaction is fun. I love this interaction. This is this is this is what I need. I I, I saw TDR loss. I already commented on this video. I try to keep up with everyone's video that I'm subscribed to. I can't do it every single day, but I do my best. So, wow, 36 people in here. We're not doing too bad, man. Look at, you guys should be at church right now. What are you doing watching me? This is crazy. <laughs> Don't watch me. Go home. No. 
Um, but yeah, man, there's there's a lot of stuff. I'm actually thinking about creating a series because we we've, we've talked about VRS before, and a lot of people still like. I'll give you an example. How many people in here know what VRS is without googling it? I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Don't Google it. Let's see how many people actually know what VRS is and how it affects multi rotor quads. Not just multi rotor tricopters. They affect a lot of stuff. Let's see if anybody knows what VRS is because these are things that plague drones and multi rotors that you just need to know about. No, timeless truth. Okay. Sounds like church to me. <laughs> but Duga, why do you keep getting uh hey Vortex something? Why rock? You're pretty close, man. You almost nailed that one on the head. Larry Darkin with a no. Larry Dakin. Dakin. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, man. Prop wash. Ruland. You have it on the head. It is known as settling the power or vortex ring state. And it plagues multi-rotors. It used to be really a major problem with heavy birds. You don't see that as much with the Mavic series anymore. Not that it can't happen. It certainly can happen with just the right airflow on a bad day. Too much humidity can also cause that. So there's things to consider when flying. VRS is something that every pilot should know about if you're flying any multi-rotor platform. If you don't know what vortex ring state is, it is something that you need to research for yourself. I'll give you a quick explanation unless you go from there. It plagues helicopters the worst. Okay, helicopters get it the worst. If you ever want to watch some crazy videos, just go on YouTube and look up VRS helicopter, and you will see some of the sickest crashes in history. Uh, most of them happen on naval ships. For helicopters trying to take off while landing at a, at a certain thing, it develops air underneath the props, which causes it to stall, and then the, the helicopter just falls out of the sky like a rock. It's crazy. Same thing happens with drones. So when you see a drone that's really heavy, if the props and the setup that's on there can't really handle the load, when you start coming down from an altitude, if you start descending right at a high rate of speed and you start seeing these wobbles and it's like doing crazy stuff, that's the first stages of VRS. Now, a helicopter that large isn't going to tell you. It's just going to drop. All of a sudden, you're going to have power loss and the helicopter is just going to drop. A multi-rotor, you have more than multiple blades going at, at the same time. So you have a little more time to calculate for VRS, whereas you know most helicopters are single rotor or dual rotor, but they're just, you know, it's all one setup. So you don't have four arms, each pushing individually. So the only way to get out of VRS is to give yourself a directional path. Most people will hammer, hammer down the throttle. And when they do that, when they see their drone just start free falling for no apparent reason, like a rock, they hit the throttle thinking that's going to make it recover. All that's going to do is speed it up to planet Earth. Okay. The only way to get out of vortex ring state is to give yourself a directional path. Let off the throttle, let it go into hover and just give yourself a directional path. Put forward, right, roll left, roll just use your roll stick, choose a direction. And hopefully if you haven't gotten up to terminal velocity or you're traveling at an extremely high rate of speed, you can pull out. If you can pull out, you can recover. You only have about maybe three seconds of recovery time. After three seconds, it's coming down way too fast to recover. It doesn't matter what you do. It's going to hit the ground. It's, it's so the two to three seconds is about what you have for, for VRS. If it just starts falling, give it a directional path. Doesn't matter, just any direction. <laughs> and hopefully it will recover before it hits the ground. So these are things that all pilots should know, all of you. I, I feel like there's never enough information out there about properly flying and things that you need to know. The test is good. I, I like the 107 test, but it doesn't cover stuff that you really uniquely need to know just based on multi-rotor drones, UAVs. So yeah, man. High altitude happens too. Yes, it can, absolutely. The air starts getting a lot thinner, man. You can easily start falling. Sure. If you ever want to see a really unique video, go to um, just go on YouTube and type guy flies drone at Everest base camp. I don't know if you guys know this, but the air starts to thin out at 10,000 feet, which is why helicopters don't normally like to fly 10,000 feet. Right. You know, and that's where um, big jet liners like to go way above that. And that's why it's a pressurized cabin. That's why your ears pop when you're inside of there because they pressurize the cabin. Right? You can feel the pressure difference. So they're way above it, but the, uh, the oxygen in the air is so low that you couldn't breathe, and that's why they pressurize the cabin. So, but it also allows for a much smoother flight being up that high. Now, because they're not multi-rotor, they don't have to rely on pulling wind into the props to stay airborne. So because there's less air, right, it affects multi-rotors. With wings, it's easy. You can pick up a lot more drag or, or you know, lift with wings. Even if the air is thin, you can still glide up into it with no issues. So there's, there's definitely big differences in, in how this, this flight works. So 
yeah, man. Um, I used to do these kind of videos all the time. Maybe I should start doing them again. <laughs> I used to start doing them again here, Dan. Oh, man. That's what she said. That's my line. Michael Green Parrot Bebop 2 is a very dependable drone at a good price. Yes, it is. The Bebop 2 is a fantastic drone. It's just getting a lot more expensive now. And it's harder to get parts for. So it's one of those drones, unfortunately, that are phasing out because Parrot doesn't want to keep up with them. They want you to buy the Anafi or any of their other drones. So they're not trying to keep up with the Bebop 2, which is unfortunate. Again, we have another company bailing out of the market. It doesn't want to help. Tim Robinson, it has been a while. I missed the start. Did you forgive Hubson? The answer is... No, I did not forgive Hubson for the stuff that happened five plus years ago, four years ago, whatever. However, I think that they have moved forward as a company. And I think that their, their drones that they make and equipment has gotten a lot better. They still do some very questionable things in my head. But I do think that they are, are a good company to have around now. I'm glad they started making changes into stuff like this, platforms into this. And, and this is old now. This is two years old at least. Um, but... The stuff they're coming out with now is good. 4K cameras, I mean, optical flow. They're finally starting to get into technology that is is new age. Before, man, they were just like making very questionable products that were running on extremely old tech that could have been better. So have you seen the um, video of rescue helicopter pulling a patient up on a stretcher and the harness starts spinning? Yes, I have. And it just goes crazy. Dude, I would, I would, oh my God, I don't know what I would do. Bro, I, I, we, okay, so I went to Traverse Bay Community School. It was a, a fun school, but man, if we did half the stuff, if the kids did half the stuff I did at my school today and the teachers were okay with it, we had this massive tire swing. We would spin kids and spin and we would go until it was super, super tight, just let them go and they'd spin it like 400 miles an hour in a circle, right? And then for fun, our school had massive monster truck tires and the kids could get inside and push their hands against each other and their feet. I lock into them and we'd roll them down this massive hill and just send them spiraling down and they'd fly out and kids would like break their necks. It was awesome. We went to the coolest school ever because you could just try to kill yourself every day. And it was just, it was fun. It was fun. Kids will never understand that struggle today of giant monster truck tires. And now you like slide down a slide at school. They're like, here's some wax paper. Don't want to burn your rump. You know, just kids, kids, man, they, we made soft kids. That's what happened. My generation made soft kids. That's exactly what took place. Kids now are just soft. <laughs> oh my gosh. Soft as baby poo. Hey, can you 3D print me a new head? <laughs> All right. Enjoy the ride. Always looking out for cheap H501. Missed out on the advanced controller. Dude, don't you didn't miss out on anything. The advanced I hated the advanced controller compared to the standard controller. The advanced controller was garbage in my opinion. It just was. It looks cool. It looks a little more professional. But it was garbage. It wasn't as easy to modify. There was just it had its it really had its issues and its drawbacks. I was not a fan. So um but da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da yes, I have Agent A. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, has anyone heard about DJI Mavic 3? Snapped it briefly for one. Thank you in advance for the info. I don't I don't even care what do <laughs> honestly i am the worst youtuber ever i'm the worst youtuber ever because i don't care about dji products at all like at all i don't i don't even want to know about them i don't care what they're making i as someone who really really hates absolutely hates restrictions and being restricted by things i i'm not a fan I am like the rebel skateboarder. I love open source. I'm not a fan of following all the rules. I, I just don't. You know what's funny? I just said that and I lost two likes. <laughs> Anytime you talk about DJI, man, some people just are like, oh, what? I love DJI. Guys, we're all allowed to have our own opinions, man. Don't forget that. So I'm just not a fan. I don't, I don't care about what DJI is doing. They're killing the market, in my opinion. Everybody just keeps talking about them. So they're destroying the drone market. They're taking all the competition right out of the market. Pretty soon you won't have a choice. You'll just be stuck with DJI stuff. And that's that's where we're headed now. So, okay, I get here late. Did you forgive them? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the answer is no, I did not. However, they are still making really good products, right? They're moving forward progressively as a company and they're actually putting new age tech and they're starting to kind of get with the program, which I'm okay with. Do I forgive them for their old, you know, 
stuff that they did to uh, pilots and people that originally bought all their stuff? No. But moving forward, I don't want to talk about them in a bad way anymore because I think they are doing positive things for the community and they're working hard to try to bring proper technology to their products and push them forward at a cheap price. So I'm okay with that. So Hobson does get a shout out in a small aspect. I give them credit for what they're doing. <coughs> um, Fat Shark, buy a new company. So they're going to make, yes, yes. We were talking about that, Red Cat. That's interesting that a that the because Red Cat's more known for like RC cars and bashing vehicles and stuff like that. They've been around a while, but it's really weird they're throwing their hand in the pot with Fat Shark. I don't understand what they're doing. So I think uh, he's kidding you, D man, bro. Hope you're all that. Need to calibrate digital goggles. Did I miss something? Oh, it's LCFPV. What's up, man? Glad to finally see you and have a great day, Dan. Me and Snap dragging my life after work. Maybe I can get some packs in too. Heck yeah, bro. Go rip tater chip. That's what I'm talking about. All right. What did I miss? Tim Robinson. Tech H502C. Most of the other Hubsons will find. Yeah, there you go. Advanced control. I didn't think the Xeno. Dude, I was able to bind everything to any one of the controllers. They all have the same binding procedure. I was able to fly my FPV, like, I don't even remember what it was. A little tiny one. Well, tiny sucker. You can, and I could have video on the screen too, man. But it it was set for manual flying, so it was always at half throttle. You can almost all of the Hubsons almost have the identical binding procedure for all the old five hundred one series. Once they switched over to this, it became a totally different story. Proprietary based. So, uh, roundabout on the park. Someone on a scooter would spin back wheel until centrifugal force. Yes, yes, that was fun my buddy had one drew drew boyer growing up he had a 50 cc honda elite from like 1987 and they have those little merry-go-rounds that kids ride at the park he used to take his scooter and turn it sideways put his back tire on the side of the thing and just rev it and it would get the merry-go-round thing spinning extremely fast oh my god people would just go flying 15 feet 20 feet my buddy wrecked himself into a bench that was close by I'm telling you, I'm surprised we're still here today. Kids will never understand the stupidity we used to get into, man. They just won't. There's such big, soft baby poos. I want to play video games. I want to stream to TikTok. <laughs> They're so like Kids are just lame. It scolds your kids. Whoop their ass. Take stuff away from them. Don't be nice. Be a parent, man. Don't be your kid's best friend. That's how you fail, trying to be your kid's best friend. You can do that after they're an adult, then become their best friend. When they're growing up, man, it's no time to be your kid's best friend. You smack down on that little bastard. Whoop that ass, man. Yeah, bunch, Exactly. Roadkill. Bunch of little pansies, man. Kids are pansies today. <laughs> hey, I don't care, dude. Like People are always like, oh, don't spank your kid. You know, I, I, I have this thing, man, where it's like, you know, sometimes you have to, to instill something that they're going to remember forever. Sometimes a good ass whooping is needed. My friends always like, aren't you afraid that if you beat the kid's ass that they're going to turn, turn you into whoever? And I was like, they can turn me into whoever they want because the conversation I'm going to have with my kid is going to be radically different from what you think. I'm going to go up to my kid and I'm going to say, you're going to get this ass whooping because you deserve it. And at the end of this ass whooping, if you don't think that I'm not here to help you through life and make sure the decisions you make are good for yourself, I will give you a phone. You can call whoever you want. Just remember, when the state takes you away from me, I will work my hardest to get you back. Okay? But at the same time, for the next five to six years of your life, you're going to be passed around home to home to home. You're not going to have any friends. You're going to be a ward of the state. And it's going to be me trying to get you back that entire time because I love you. But I will hand you the phone and let you make that decision. Right? You need to let the child know what the deal is, right? I'll let them make the phone call because that's something they need to learn. That's part of life, man. If you really feel that you don't want to be here and I'm not out for your best interest, here's the phone. You call whoever you want to. I'm still going to fight for you, but you can call whoever you want to. There's a good learning curve to be had there. So, <clears throat> Oh, you guys are so violent. You're so violent, man. 
All right, man. I'm shutting it down. I got to go make a video with these little tiny, tiny ass little filters for the Xeno. It's such a strange, like, it's such the camera's always down on this thing. Such a weird setup. No, you just like push it in there with like a, like a little suction cup thing. Like, you now have to carry this around plus those. Like, what is this? What the fucking? I don't understand. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Hubson, still doing questionable things. I don't forgive you. You're doing better. But what is this shit? I don't, like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm out of here. Thanks for smashing the like button. Thanks for being supportive. I will get back with you guys, man. Um, like I said, kind of stream when I can. I might be up for doing uh, Sunday streams more often. Don't forget, we still have Jose Rodriguez to explain f-stop filters, ND16s, proper lighting, editing techniques. We have a guy who has agreed to show you guys some really cool stuff. He is a larger channel. He's, this is what he does. He also will teach you the best settings on your cameras for printing, printing high-def photos, man. So he's a really good guy to have on board. Michael, I got you. Don't you worry, my friend. I'm going to be emailing you soon. So I will catch you guys on the flip. Gone, man. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Go out and do something awesome. I'll catch you guys on the flip. To the view.